So we've been looking at forms inside of HTML pages and we've used the label tag and the input tag, the label to describe what our form field is gonna be. And the input tag we've seen has a lot of different uses. Now we've mostly seen things that are just a little uh, box that you type in and we can type in different things like numbers or email, phone numbers, or even just plain text. But now we wanna look at some other types of form fields. and. I'm going to be honest, the input with those text boxes and whatever format that it might be is going to be the vast majority of what you're going to use. But there are cases where you want to provide a different way to get input from a user. And so that's what we're going to start looking at now. And we're going to start with what's known as a select tag. So I'm going to come over here and in my HTML, I'm going to create a label for, and this is going to be department. Remember, this is going to be for kind of an internal form that we're going to use. And so we're asking what department the person works in. And then we're going to use the select tag. Now, right now you're gonna notice that the select tag has an open and close tag, that's very important. And just like with the input tag, we're gonna use a name and ID attribute. In both cases, we're gonna call this department. Remember, your ID does have to be unique and it's gonna connect with the for attribute in our label tag. Now the name is going to be sent to the form processor and the ID is going to be attached to the for attribute in our label as well as it's also going to be used if we need to do any type of JavaScript. For example, we might have some form handling. Now for right now, I'm going to leave this select with no more attributes. We're going to see some other attributes in just a few minutes, but I'm going to come down here and under the select, I'm gonna give it some options. And you notice I have an opt group, which allows me to group options together. So for example, let's say I have uh, cities in a state, I have some multiple states, I might group them by a state and then have the cities underneath that group. But we're just gonna look at straight options right now. And so I'm gonna do option and just a closing option tag. This works in most cases. I'm going to pick sales. I'll do an option for marketing. And then I can keep making more options. But I want to show you now what we can do with options as well. So I'm going to choose right here another option. And I'm going to give it a property of value. Now, if I don't give this value property, it's going to use whatever's in between my two option tags in order to define what that value is. But this way, I can make it some other value if I want to. So, for example, let's say that this was going to be like a, uh, a form registering for a prize. And maybe if you are administration, you're not eligible. It's only for the day-to-day -day workers, not administration. So I'll put a value of NA, not applicable. And then I'll put administration. So in this case, if someone were to pick administration, it would be sent NA and we would know to skip over that. And this is great if I have a couple different values. I've also used this in many cases if I want to list, for example, every state. And I'm gonna use the postal code, and so I list out the state name as people can find that maybe a little bit faster. Oh, okay, here's Texas, and they put, but I have a value of TX, so it uses the two-letter postal code. So I'm gonna save this just real quick, come back and reload this form. And you notice it comes up and says, what department do I look in? And I have a couple of different options. Now I am gonna put a line break right here above this one just so it's a little bit easier to see. And I reload and you can see now what department do you work in? And this creates a drop down menu for me to use. 
Okay, so it's, that's how we do it. So we just create a select statement. Now, in doing this, we have a default value for number of rows we're going to display. I can say size, and I can specify, for example, three. If I reload this, notice I have three different options I can see. Now, you might go, well, why would I want this? Well, if I just have a few options, I might want to have multiple rows I can select. Additionally, this allows me one other attribute. And this is going to be a Boolean attribute, so I just have to list it. I don't have to give it a value. But if I say multiple, now if I reload, I can click sales or I can click administration. But if I hold on a PC, control on a Mac command, I can select a second option. So I can be in both sales and administration. Now, typically this would not be necessary for what department do you work in. Typically you only work in a single department, but there are cases where you do need to make multiple selections and this is how you do it. So notice that if I have multiple attribute used, I'm going to need to have a uh, a size that's more than one. Now, of course, I'm going to just going to remove that multiple. I'm going to put the size back to one. So I go back, and now I go back to that drop down that you see here. So it's really simple and easy for me to use. Now, notice that this is picking sales, and sales is my first option. And most of your browsers are going to pick the first option as the option you're going to select but that's not always the case. So let me show you an example of that. And here I'm going to pick option and I'm going to choose a new Boolean attribute for my option tag. And this is selected. Once again, as a Boolean attribute, I don't have to specify a value. I just say selected and I'll specify support. Now, a company I used to work for, about a third of people probably worked in support, and that's a large number, especially given all the different departments. We had IT and sales and marketing. We had an administration department, of course. We had internal support, and we had developers, and a wide variety of them. So to have a third of your people work in support, maybe you want to make this a default value, and that's what selected is going to do. When I come over here and reload this, support the last option is now the one that is selected by default so if i know that most of my uh, people are living in a certain state or if i know most of my people are in a given field or department or if i know what most of the time people are going to select i might want to choose a default value simply by saying selected and that will let me help them fill out the forms a little bit faster. They don't have to go scrolling through this. This is also great if maybe I've pulled information from another source and I'm using it to populate this information. I can do something like this and the whole idea will be that way they don't have to go and find it out. They only need to change something if it's changed from a previous year. So a great example of that is in doing a school registration form that I created. We knew what they filled out last year, and so we pre-populated all the stuff from the previous year. That way, they only had to change things that had changed. So if they moved to a different location, they filled in their new address, or maybe they changed the phone number, so they changed that, and everything else stayed the same. And so pre-populating based upon either previously known or based upon what's most common is a great way to just be more efficient. And this is a great way to kind of see that. And that's how we're going to create drop-down menus and multiple select items inside of a web form.